It's the final week of the Premier League 23-24 season and that means it's the final week of Premier League predictions. As always, I'm joined by Sophie. How are you? Yeah, I'm excited for the last day madness, but also I'm sad it's ending. I know, it's been an incredible season. And the first thing I need to say before we get into any predictions today is a massive thank you for your support, guys. If we didn't get the great support that you give us, we wouldn't do these videos. So I just want to say a massive thank you to you. And if you want to say a massive thank you to us, then let's go for the biggest like target ever, Sophie. 2,999 likes. Okay. It's doable because we get thousands of viewers. We just need every single one of you to make sure you're hitting that like button and make sure to subscribe as you can see we're so close to 65,000 subscribers we're only 10 subscribers away so make sure to subscribe as well and I just want to say a massive thank you again for your great support there's still loads of content to come even when the season comes to an end the scores between myself and Sophie from the predictions last week you beat me again um what is it 16 points ahead now yeah I, d I don't know how I won last week to be honest you just keep winning to be honest Sophie unless I can do something ridiculous in this final week of Premier League predictions You've smashed me this season. Let's get into the games then and we have 10 games to predict on the final day But before that we've got two games coming on Wednesday night So make sure you get your predictions in quickly for these Let's start on the South Coast Sophie as Brighton take on Chelsea now Chelsea Sophie They're ending the season in some really good form they are, and I'd said it a couple of weeks ago Actually, they're playing really well. And I think they're gonna end this game well as well yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I think you've got to make Chelsea slight favourites given the form mm. and the fact they've got more to play for now. Um, it's weird to think a few weeks ago you'd have thought Brighton would be fighting for Europe and Chelsea wouldn't, but the form for both teams has been complete contrasts and Brighton have gone down the table, Chelsea have gone up the table. That said, I will say for Brighton in their last two games, it's a draw against Newcastle and a win against Villa, so that's yes. pretty good. Yes. Um, let's go for an entertaining Desmond. Brighton 2, Chelsea 2. Okay, I'm going to say 3. 3-1 Chelsea. I am going to give Brighton a goal and I feel a little bit harsh not giving them anything from this one considering they have been playing better in recent weeks. Yeah. Before that they were suffering with a bit of a goal drought so they have found their scoring boots again but coming up against Chelsea who are in form right now and I can't see anything but a Chelsea win so 3-1. 3-1 Chelsea, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got the feel of a game with goals, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. I think there's going to be goals in that one. What about in this one, Sophie, as we go to Old Trafford, Manchester United take on Newcastle United. Uh, both teams, just like Chelsea, are fighting for Europa League places. So it's a big game for both. Newcastle United, obviously a very good team, in pretty good form at the moment. Manchester United are all over the place and Old Trafford is falling down. Yeah, it, literally. Um, it was a 1-0 defeat to Arsenal at the weekend, which maybe isn't the worst result in the world. But how have we got to this point with Man United where we're starting to say 1-0 defeats at home is a pretty decent result? Yeah. Um, do you know what? I think they could lose again here. I think it'd be a close game. I'm going to go for a few goals, but I'm just going to edge the Geordies. They've just got a bit more hunger about them. Manchester United are a mess. Man United 1, Newcastle 2. Yeah, sometimes in predictions I will edge the home side, but with it being Man United, I don't think that's any factor in this. So I think it's going to be another 1-0 defeat at home. Really? Yeah, 1-0 Newcastle. There you go, going for the Geordies. Man United are just a mess, aren't they? I mean, th yeah. it's not even that they can fix it over the summer. They need a good few years to rebuild that club. Yeah, because you keep chopping and changing the manager, but no, I think it's more deep-rooted than that. Let's move on to the final day predictions then, Sophie, and we start with a game that's got quite a lot riding on it at the Emirates. It's Arsenal versus Everton. Now, of course, there is more to play for for Arsenal here. Um, if they win and Man City don't win, then they win the Premier League title. But they are asking quite a lot. But what they've got to make sure they do, Sophie, is just keep their end of the bargain. Because, yeah. I mean, how frustrating would it be if Arsenal don't win and Man City don't win as well? Because then Arsenal yeah. will have missed that opportunity. So, obviously, Arsenal are going to take this seriously and going to try and get the win over the line. And then just hope that West Ham can do them a favour against Man City. Everton, they've been solid this year. Of course, we keep saying if they had their points added back on that were deducted, they would be mid-table. Um, Sean Dyche has got to be up there for you know one of the managers of the season. He's, he's done a good job, I think. Yeah, he does a good job. He's not a pretty kind of manager. It's not pretty football, but it's results business and he gets the results. I'd say for me, Arteta and Sean Dyche are both in my top five managers for this season. Um, as for this game, it's got to be an Arsenal win, surely. I'm going to go Arsenal 3, Everton 1. Okay, I'm going to say Arsenal 2-0. I think it'd be good to keep a clean sheet um, against an Everton side that 
aren't playing too badly at the moment. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did actually get a goal, but I'm not going to give them one. Um, for me, Arsenal just need to focus on their game, hope for the best in the others, but just need to get their three points. And I think they will do it. I don't think it's going to be an easy game, um, but I think they're more than capable of getting the win. So 2-0. 2-0 Arsenal, yeah. So, of course, that means with both of our predictions... Arsenal have a chance of winning the Premier League, but it will all hinge on if West Ham can deny Man City. And remember, Man City need to win. A draw won't be enough for Man City if Arsenal win. Uh, and of course, a draw is no good for Arsenal. Arsenal have to win, which then would mean Man City have to win. And we'll come on to them in a bit. Let's go on to the next game, Sophie. Staying in the capital, we have Brentford versus Newcastle. This could be a good game, Sophie. Two good teams that could play good football. Uh, Brentford, they got a very good win last time against Bournemouth on they the did. road yeah they did that surprised me yeah and if they can pick up a win in this game you know it's been a pretty good end to the season when as we've said before it whole. wasn't a great yeah. season but you know we keep saying this thing with Brentford that they've set the bar so high um, but that's just testament to them as a club they're doing incredible Newcastle come into this with more to play for it kind of depends what they do on the Wednesday night game against Manchester United um, let's go for some more goals, Sophie. Brentford 2, Newcastle 3. Okay, I'm going to stick with the same winner, but a couple less goals for me. I'm going to say 2-1, Newcastle. I think Brentford have ended their season better than they started, but they'll obviously look to have a better season next season. Newcastle, overall, not been a bad season for them if they do end on a win. So, yeah, 2-1. Two 2-1, one. Two one Geordies. Yeah, sounds like a good game, though. On to the next one, Soph. Let's see what you make of this. It's Brighton versus Manchester United. Now, as we said, both teams will be playing on Wednesday night before this one. Brighton are taking on Chelsea. Manchester United at home to Newcastle. Uh, then we come to this one. Um, and as we said, Manchester United still have a chance of making Europe right now. Brighton don't. I just don't know how much of a difference that'll make for this one though, so I think because it's the last game of the season and Brighton are at home and they're playing a high profile club, they're gonna want to put a show on. Of course, yeah. Um let's go Brighton 4-0. Wow. Brighton 4-0. Good yeah. Man United. Okay, wow. Um I think they'll want to put a show on, yes, but I don't think there'll be as many goals. I'm gonna say 2-1 to Brighton. <laughs> so I'm going a little bit safer. Um, but yeah, I'm going to back, I think, favourites in this one. Man United have been poor all season and I think they're going to end on a defeat, which would just sum their season up. So 2-1 Brighton. 2-1 Brighton. Yeah, share your thoughts, guys, on Brighton versus Manchester United. Next up, Sophie, we've got a dead rubber at Turf Moor. It's Burnley versus Nottingham Forest. We were saying for quite a few weeks that this game could have quite a lot riding on it, uh, and ultimately Burnley have just come up a few points short, and they are relegated. Um, commiserations to them, but if they can keep a lot of their best players and, and company as well, then I think they could come straight back up. Yeah. Um, as for Nottingham Forest, we'll say congratulations. While they're not mathematically safe yet, um, it would take a 12-goal difference yeah. swing for them to be relegated, and that's just not realistic, is it? Um, I don't know what to expect from Forest, Sophie. Let's be honest. Yes, they've had a points deduction, but it's still been a poor season, and mm. they've been the fourth worst team this year. Um, good enough to stay up, and credit to them. I like Forest. I'm happy they're staying up. But you do feel like there's some big work to do over the summer for them to, to push on again. Otherwise, they could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that. As for a prediction, um, it's the final day of the season. Maybe now that both teams don't have a lot to play for, they can have a bit of freedom and rotate a little bit. And maybe it'd be a good game, actually. Um, let's go Burnley 2, Forest 3. I'm going to back Forest to get okay. three points. Let's go for more goals. Do you know what? I backed Burnley to get a result at the weekend and they let me down. But for about... 20 minutes <laughs> I was like oh wow I've they actually were, called it they, they were, were winning, winning yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously it didn't end that way but I'm thinking let me give them another chance 3-2 Burnley they end the season on a win going into the next season in some good form there you go we both think it'd be a cracker I think there could be quite a few goals in this one actually yeah well guys share your thoughts on that game if you're a Burnley fan or a Forest fan definitely let me know how you're feeling going into next season as well because I am intrigued to see how both clubs do next year on to the next one so if let's go to Stamford Bridge it's Chelsea versus Bournemouth um, as we said Chelsea are playing on Wednesday night they've still got a chance of making European football 
And if they were to win their final two games this week, then all of a sudden this season's actually been all right. And it's yeah. funny to say that when you think how exactly. bad it was looking a few months ago. They take on Bournemouth, Sophie. Now, Bournemouth have nothing to play for technically, but um, they're no mugs. They're a good team. Mm. And I could see them rocking up and getting something. I'm chucking in loads of goals today, so let's do some more. I'm going to go Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 2. Oh, I thought you were going to back a Bournemouth win then, the way you were lining that up. Yeah, as I said to you earlier on in the video, it seemed that when Chelsea had nothing to play for, they then started playing football, and now yeah. they've got a chance. There is something to play for, European football, and I think they're capable of doing it. I like Bournemouth as a team. I think they've had a very, very good season, but right now I'm going to back Chelsea again. I'm going to say 3-2. I think there could be a few goals. I like Bournemouth. I think they're capable of getting a few goals because they play some good football. But right now, I can't not go for Chelsea. Yeah. 3-2. The thing that could work in Bournemouth's advantage is, you know, that they'll be better rested if Chelsea are playing midweek. Yeah. But uh, Chelsea are a very good team. You know, yeah. they've shown that. But very inconsistent. Who knows? On to the next one, Soph. I'm excited to see this one. It's Crystal Palace versus Aston Villa. Uh, first thing we've got to say, Sophie, is congratulations, Aston Villa, on making the Champions League. Yeah. I mean, what an incredible achievement. Yeah, that's a great season. I think he's a very good manager and he's oh. got them playing good football. Like, come back against Liverpool when you think, ah, oh, they're down and out at that point. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, they've been like that all season, to be honest. And they've got a great fan base as well, I'll say that. Great club, big club, and... Yeah, Champions League football, wow. Yeah, I, I am really excited. A bit like when we knew that St James's Park was going to be in the Champions League. Yeah. Just think of Real Madrid going to Villa Park. You know, that's that's yeah. that, that, that's exciting. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not just the same old Old Trafford, Etihad, those kind of clubs. This is really good. And Aston Villa, for people that might not be aware, you should be aware, are a big traditional football club. And honestly... I am happy for them. I think it will be exciting to see what they can do. As you said, an incredible achievement by Unai Emery. Yes, they've fallen out of the Conference League, but to finish top four in such a competitive Premier League yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. Well done. They take on Palace, Sophie. And Palace, I do like me some Palace. They've been so good lately under Glasner. And you backed them to win 3-1 at Wolves and you were spot on. Yeah, I did think at one point, like, oh, there's going to be another goal. But no, I was happy with that prediction. Back in Palace has been doing me some good recently. And uh, have you seen that they've valued their manager at 100 mil? Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, there was a team, can't remember the team now, but they were looking at him. Because obviously he's doing a great job. And yeah. they said, well, give us 100 mil then. Which I think, oh, for a manager's a bit steep. But yeah. he is doing a good job at the moment. I mean, when you think of some of the players they've got as well with Eze and Elise, they've got some proper Mateta, gems. Yeah. yeah, Mateta. They've got some real gems at that club, including the manager. Um, when it comes to a prediction, Sophie, I think both teams are fantastic. Both teams can play good football. I don't want to back either of them to lose. So let's go for another 2-2 two -two draw. Oh, so tempted to say 2-2, two -two, so I'll go different. I think there could be a few goals, but... As I said, back in Palace is doing me some good right now. So, 3-2 Palace. Oh! I think it could be a corker. Oh! Just going to go for Palace there. Share your thoughts, guys. I mean, ultimately, there's nothing to play for, so it's not a disaster if Villa lose. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Aston Villa in the Champions League next year when we have Champions League predictions as well. So, Villa fans, get subscribing if you haven't already. Um, let's go to the next one, Sophie. Let's go to Anfield. We've got Liverpool versus Wolves. And this is Jurgen Klopp's last mm -hmm. game as Liverpool manager um, now personally I'm not a Liverpool fan but I could actually get quite emotional and sentimental about this because I I've really enjoyed Jurgen Klopp I really enjoyed him what a great yeah. manager um, yes he's only won one Premier League yes he's won one Champions League but how close has he got to winning you know more than that oh. as well I mean there's a couple of Carabao Cups in there as well Honestly, it's not just what he's won, but what he's done to that club. You know, the the turnover of players. I mean, when you think what position Liverpool were in when he first went in, yeah, yeah. incredible. There's going to be a lot of big work to do in the summer when he goes, because it's just like, you know, when Sir Alex left Man United, it's going to leave a big hole. But I do hope Liverpool get things right over the summer. And at the same time, I wish Jurgen Klopp a very happy retirement retirement, retirement Possibly, but yeah. he, he will come back to football surely yeah. um, they take on Wolves Sophie Wolves are a good team but they've fizzled out as we keep saying towards the end of the season let's go for some more goals I'll go Liverpool 3 Wolves 1 yeah I'm going to go 4-1 Liverpool I think the players need to give Jurgen Klopp a good send off and yeah. what better way than doing it than a good performance on the pitch scoring plenty of goals and 
Yeah, I would like to see it as well. So that prediction's coming from the heart, I think. I'd like to see a few goals for a good send-off for Jurgen Klopp. And I think that the team on the pitch are more than capable of doing it. So, yeah, 4-1. 4-1. Yeah, share your thoughts down below, guys. It, uh, imagine how horrible it'd be if Liverpool lose, lose, like, 3-0 or something. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'll see you later then. <laughs> oh, no. Whatever happens, they'll give them a good send-off after yeah. the game. On to the next one, Sophie. We go to Kenilworth Road. It's Luton Town versus Fulham. Um, of course, Luton Town aren't mathematically relegated just yet, but as we said, they need a 12-goal difference swing. Mm. So it's pretty much written on the wall that Luton Town will be back in the Championship next year. But one thing you've got to say is they have given it a really good go. I mean, they've been the best of the three newly promoted teams, and I, I want them to go out on a high, you know, with their last game being at home. I hope they can get a win. Yeah, I hope they can get a win. I think both Luton and in a way, Burnley as well, they've not disgraced themselves, not quite like Sheffield United did. Um, not just trying to get a dig in there, but they did go up and give more of a fight than Sheffield United did. They didn't just roll over, and I've got to give both those teams some credit. Um, shame to see them go down, but I think if they keep hold of a lot of their good players, they should be absolutely fine next season. And Rob Edwards, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, very good-looking manager, I must say. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Let's uh, let's give a prediction, Sophie. Go on, let's give Luton Town a win. Yes, they're playing Fulham, who are a good team, but uh, if you're at home and you know you're probably going down, why not try and get three points to end the season on a bit of a high? Yeah. Luton 2-1. I'm actually going to say 2-2. Two, two. I'm going for Desmond. Mm. I've not gone for one this week. You've gone for a couple. So this is going to be my Desmond game. Two teams that are more than capable of winning this game, so it could go either way. But, yeah, for me, I'm going down the middle. Yeah, and um, good luck to Luton Town moving forwards. We'll see you probably again in the Championship next year, where I think if they get things right over the summer, they'll be strong. Right, yeah. On to the next one, Sophie. There's only two games left, and this one's a big one as we go to the Etihad. It's Manchester City versus West Ham United. And, um, yeah, the title is up for grabs, and it's in Manchester City's hands. Um, the, the interesting thing is here, Sophie, is they're playing West Ham United, and West Ham don't have really anything to play for, but it is David Moyes' last game. Yeah. And um, imagine, just imagine, if he was to get something here. Yeah. In his last game, that would be incredible. It's very difficult to see it because how good Man City are. But let's just quickly run through it. Man City, great win against Tottenham in midweek. They kept their call, cool, they got the win. And um, it'll be four wins in a row if they can get this over the line. Four Premier Leagues yeah. in a row. I mean, yeah, that's. It's just. It's like the Man United era under Sir Alex, where it's just relentless. You know who's going to win the league. I think I predicted Man City to win the league. We both did. Beginning the season. Yep. So it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's a little bit underwhelming because you think, oh, they've done it again. It's not a shock. Yeah. Um, oh, I'd love to see West Ham get something just because I'd like to see someone other than Man City win the Premier League. But as for my prediction, I think West Ham could try and be an obstacle, try and get a goal, try and stop Man City from scoring. But um, do you know what? Let's go Let's go. Man City scrape it. Okay. 2-1. I thought you were going to go like draw or something. Then. No, I'll go. I, you've got a back Man City, but I, yeah. I'd like West Ham to put up a fight. I'll say 2 1. I'd like them to put up a fight, but this is business end of the season for Man City. They just get the job done. Yeah. So for me, it's going to be a 2 0 win. Um, I can see them actually being kept out for most of the game. And I think it could be two late goals, but they're still going to get it done for me and they're going to win the league. Um, don't want to say like just end it on oh it's underwhelming they've won again because it is some achievement winning four seasons in a row the Premier League it is some achievement but it would be nice to see someone else win it yeah I totally agree with that and as we said just imagine in David Moyes' last game at West Ham that'd be incredible yeah. but what I will say is whether West Ham win or lose and we probably expect them to lose um good luck to David Moyes going forwards and good luck to West Ham with yes. the rebuild over the summer the final game then, Sophie, is at Bramall Lane. It's Sheffield United versus Tottenham Hotspur. Sheffield United are relegated. They've now conceded over 100 goals. Yeah, shocking that. And they take on Tottenham, who've not actually been in great form recently. So could Sheffield United go out on a bit of a, a win or a draw, which would be something? Tottenham, of course, can't make the top four anymore, but it is still possible they could actually finish outside of the top six if other results went against them. So... Um, they need to make sure they get something. <sighs> Sheffield United 1, Tottenham 4. Okay. Um, I can see why you've gone quite heavy in favour of Spurs because Sheffield United have just conceded goals for fun this season. But I'm going to go 
Spurs 2-0. I think, yeah, Spurs, be good to keep a clean sheet. Um, good to get a couple of goals and obviously end the season on a win. But, yeah, you really don't know with Sheffield United because they could weirdly turn up in this one. Spurs haven't been at their best and they could get a result, but I'm going to go for the safe bet and back a Spurs win 2-0. There you go. That's the last Premier League prediction we're doing this season then, Sophie. Aww, it wraps it up. It's emotional. I know. Well, there you go, guys. Share your thoughts down below. Because it's the last episode, we did have a bit of fun. I've put in like 50 goals or something this week. Share your predictions down in the comments, guys. Make sure, of course, as we said, to drop a like. Make sure to subscribe. Just because the Premier League predictions has finished for a season doesn't mean the content has finished, so get involved. Um, thank you for this week, Sophie, and thank you for this season. You've been amazing. Oh, thank you. And not just amazing as a guest, but with your predictions as predictions well. I mean, you, you've actually shown me up big time. Well, not, I don't think it's that You bad. have, you it's, have. Come on, I'm stop being, being modest. Yeah, stop yeah. being modest. You know you've battered me. It was a good season. Let us know down below how you got on with your Premier League predictions this season, if you've been keeping track. That's it then, guys. Thank you once again for your great support. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace out.